Hello and welcome back to our series about a 2D platformer in Godot using the Rust programming language. In the last session we actually did already some basic gravity concepts for our player script. However, today we would like to take it to the next level and implement the overall movement and also the jumping mechanism. But before we start, let's get ready our development tools. So just fire up our file watcher and also our build script, which we will attach to the file watcher once files are changing. Therefore, we use cargo watch minus S and then under double quotes, we also run the cargo build comment every time something changes in our folder. Then we make another session of the terminal and navigate to our root project folder or let's call it the workspace folder. And now let's first create a new file in the players folder, which we call controls.rs. And here we will define just some basic structs and enums in order to use it later on in the other file. So first of all, let's create a, a enum for direction. And what we also need to do is we need to derive some basic functionalities of the partial EQ. So therefore we use the macro um, derive and pass partial EQ. So this one is used in order to allow equal checks later on, for example, in if conditions. Then let's create a new struct um, to hold all the keyboard control information. So for example, direction and what kind of button is pressed. So for example, if we move to the left, we will have a Boolean value, or if we move to the right, we will have another Boolean value as well as for jumping. We declare them all as public so that we can access them directly. Normally best practice would be to use getter and setter methods, but in that case, we just keep things very simple. Then let's also implement kind of a constructor. So we just declare a, a method of new, which returns itself. And there we just initialize a new struct in that particular case, the keyboard control struct and fill it with default values. So the direction will be none initially. And jump, for example, left and right will be all false, of course, because initially there are no buttons pressed. So once this initialization is completed, we can change back to our librs file, which is actually containing all the current player script implementation. And we will restructure our code a bit. So let's declare a constant gravity, a constant for movement, and the constant for the jump speed. In the next step, let's get rid of the default value. We just put there the controls and the keyboard control struct, what we just defined in our other file. And we also declare a is jumping boolean value on the player and of course in order to use it we need to import the module so therefore we import controls and then we say use controls and then we just put in what we want to import following up we need to modify our player initialization and add all the additional required properties. So in that case is jumping and controls. And 
and the is jumping is of course false initially and the controls we will actually use the method we just declared for the keyboard controls so the new to get an empty keyboard controls struct next we will implement the input function therefore we use again another macro um, which is called export and then we need to declare the underscore input method which is an unsafe method and this one has the default arguments as mostly already known because it's changing struct dependent values self is a mutable reference the owner we will mostly not touch so mutable can be removed in that case but it's still a kinematic body 2d and we also get an event which is an option containing a general input event and because we got some errors here we need to import of course the proper types so we will now import kinematic body input event And some others so we can get rid of the go.native with the double points and so on so this is just a simplification of our used import types then let's clean up this one as well remove the go.native with the two points because now we have direct access to the type And let's continue by implementing the logic for the input handling. So first of all, let's implement the logic for when various buttons are pressed. So therefore we have the match for the event. And then if there is some value available, we will handle it with our particular logic. And if there are no value available, we will just return it. So we just return then the function. Next, we make sure what kind of key code is currently pressed. So therefore, so therefore we are referring to our V variable and we are saying or calling the method get scanned code. And then, of course, we also will check if the value is pressed and then apply it to our particular control. And now let's add the if conditions for when the user is pressing A or D or the space bar to set the various controls to true. But let's make sure that global constants are also properly defined so therefore we refer to the go.native script documentation and there should be something like with capital letters key underscore a and if this exists we know that we import the proper definition and it exists so that means first of all we need to use the or import the type so the constants global or global constants sorry in order to use it without this go.native in front of and then we are heading back to our input method where we do the implementation so that means we are checking for the key code using the glow so the key code should be equal to the global constants of key a the same we do for key D and the spacebar.
And on my daily basis, I usually write a lot of JavaScript and TypeScript code. So that's why I already get so much used to this free time equal checks. So sorry for this mistake. Then we just add the code for the controls. So of course, if A is pressed, we change the direction to left. And if D is pressed, we change to the right. And in addition, we also apply the proper Boolean value for the public field. So in that case, for the left variable. With small modification for key D, we have almost the identical logics. And for the jumping case, we actually set this jumping to true. And also in the controls, we set jump equals value. And everybody who see my previous tutorial videos about Rust and Godots already might found out that I made a mistake. So we will cut out this code and use it actually in another pattern matching way. Because first we need to test if event has any value included in order to cast it. And then we can apply our logic. So I made a mistake here, but let's correct it now. And once this was successful, we can actually now do another match condition and do the particular cast for the input event. And we are expecting the input event key. And now we just split it again in sum and the default pattern matching implementation and then we just paste into the sum root or condition our code again. Also fix the implementation for the casting. And then we are done with the input implementation and are heading back to our physics process. And because today in this tutorial, we will actually do a total other implementation. So we get rid of the overall previous generated code and replace it with the upcoming now. So we add several if conditions for our controls where we check if the values are true. We do some distinct business logic in more details. If left is pressed, so in that case A is pressed, we will remove some of the velocity for the X coordinate. And in case that right is true, so D is pressed, we will add some movement speed. And we also add another condition check in case that left and right has the same value we set the velocity for the x to zero, which ensures that the player is not moving anymore in one direction, if both are, for example, true or if both are false. So it is kind of a reset. Let's add another if condition. So if the player is jumping, that we update the player properly in the Y coordinate. And as far as I know, there should be a is on floor method available for kinetic body. Therefore, let's have a look on the go.rust documentation to see the available methods and APIs. And as you can see here, is on floor is available. And this one is just ensuring so that if the, the player is currently current state of the player the is jumping and the player is on the floor, we will reset the Boolean value in the control struct to false. And we also add another condition if controls has for the jump property, the Boolean value true. 
and is on the floor, so the player itself is on the floor, then we will apply our jump speed in the negative direction because Godot has on the top left corner zero, zero, so that means zero value for x, zero value for y, and this increases to the bottom line of the window. That's why we add here the negative value. And then we also update y again with the gravity multiplied by the delta time. And we need to cast it as a float 32, otherwise we get an error again. And then we are using a new method where we apply the recalculated velocity, so owner, and there should be something move and slide available. So that's a function which takes several arguments. And usually in Rust, you do not have the availability of optional arguments, so you always need to define all of them. And as you can see, there are several available. So therefore, to get the default values, just head back to the go.engine API search for the function you are looking into and then you should see in the go dot definitions the standard parameter so for example move and slide has standard parameters here and we can exactly apply these standard parameters for our particular method call so move and slide then we pass the velocity we also pass a normal vector, which says in which direction is the ground located. And then we just apply the default parameters based on the documentation of Godot. Then we save the changes. We did not get any compile errors. So let's try it out. So moving left, right is already working, but jumping seems not to work. So we need to look again into our code. There is still a small mistake. And here we actually need to reset the jumping and also we need to add a better jump value or jump speed. Let's put 400 here and then it should work as expected. Great. We are happy jumping and moving around our character. Thank you for watching. See you next time.